it's the environment it's very welcoming very nurturing the first night I walked in before even talking to anyone like I just felt at peace and at ease um, Ustad the Kaltun Kawani was the one that told me to come here summer of 2021 and I had no idea what Rabata was so she had to explain to me and her and Ikran actually both of them they were like come to Rabata this Ramadan and I was like where is that and what is that and they explained it to me and then the first day of Ramadan right after we, we broke our fast I told the family I'm going I'm going to this place that Khatun and uh, Ikran suggested walked in it was so nice the lights were dim it was very quiet and then I walked through the bookstore area very nice loved it loved the colors went to the back the purple prey rugs were just so good so amazing I loved them the scent of the rugs to me felt like something uh, I was longing for something familiar and then later on I realized it's from my my childhood and my mom they would have food they would have dikr days on like a weekday I, th I, I believe it used to be Wednesdays they would have a dikr day where they do dikr and they do nasheeds and those memories were being invoked in me and I went home and I was like mashallah I don't think I've ever prayed as many rakas of taraweeh as we did and still felt good and not tired and from that day on I am here on a weekly basis usually Friday Saturday Sundays I think Rabata is giving Muslim women a home a voice and a place to be themselves we as women are nurturers and if we see something wrong we want to fix it, especially if it's something that um, is going wrong in the way our children are being taught. And we, our children are a man, right, on all of us as a community. Our children are a trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we want to make sure that they are cared for at home, but also when you take them to a place where, they, where, where they're studying, Qur studying Quran, you want that person that you're trusting your child with to take care of them because you're taking them to learn the Quran. And I feel like women in our community here in Minnesota are frustrated and tired because we're not receiving that. Our children are not getting what they need from our community. And I believe that Rabata has what it takes to make a change. And change the way our community is handling our uh, Quran and uh, Duxi um, classes and education. Um, I think Rabat is giving us the confidence that we yes we can change we can we can do things we can we can start here we can be voices for our children. I know that a lot of women in my community are very frustrated with the Tuxi system and everyone wants to do something, everyone want, wants to change. I see Rabata as being one of the major organizations that is already established and can actually help the community with that. Mm -hmm. And I'm very hopeful with the expansion that inshallah we will be able to do that. Spiritually I have changed since I walked into that door, Ramadan of 2020, alhamdulillah. Um, whenever people talk about their Iman, we talk our Iman goes up and down, right? We're never consistent in the same, right? I have a, I always talk about Ramadan of 1998 for me. That was the year that I decided to wear the hijab. And there was a Bosnian mosque at where I grew up, where I was, that we used to attend. And that Ramadan, I had an Iman boost. I started the hijab, I started teaching myself Qur'an. I was one of those kids that didn't do good in Duxi, so I started teaching myself Qur'an, memorizing short du'as, and alhamdulillah, concentrating on my salah, learning about salah on my own. Um, there was no rabata. 
Um, but I have longed for that Ramadan forever. Every year I want to be there, do better. It's been a struggle. But I can say that the last Ramadan I was here, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I feel like it was one of my best. One of my best. And I'm seeing a lot of changes in me, slowly and gradually. Um, I'm adapting to do more dhikr, um, uh, read Quran more, um, do Salatul Qadha, which I've learned from Ansar. I had no idea that we needed to um, pray the prayers that we've missed. So I've started doing that. I'm not consistent, but anytime I have a chance, I do that. Alhamdulillah, people around me, including my husband, they're all saying that they are seeing changes in me that are very good, alhamdulillah. Um, that is my uh, spiritual change that I'm experiencing. Socially, I've, made, I've met great sisters here and made good friends. Alhamdulillah, alameen. That's also good. Like it's, it usually gives me a boost when I'm here on the weekends. The weekends I don't come here. It's, it's not, it's not as great as the weekends that I come here. How would I explain the love of the culture? I would explain it as empowering for women, Muslim women, um, welcoming, and. Like, I feel like everyone that is here at Rabata and that is studying is going to be an agent for good. They are going to spread that. And already Rabata, alhamdulillah, has already, it's like, it's like an ocean. It's like spread all over the world. Um, but alhamdulillah, I see that every, every, I, like everyone that comes here will live with good knowledge, good thoughts, good Iman, inshallah, and carry that forward to their own houses and to the communities. To me, positive cultural change is honestly going back to the sunnah, practicing the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Because if you look at that, then all of our problems that we have, if we do practice the sunnah of Rasulullah the way he treated his family, the way he treated his students, because of all of his sahaba where he were his students. We have, I'm taking the companions class and we're learning that the sahaba were like us. They made mistakes. Some of them made major mistakes. But the way he, <coughs> sallallahu alayhi wasallam, handled it, the way he taught them the lessons, they were all subtle. Right? So, to me, positive cultural change is having the ability to teach without causing damage. The ability to reinforce and give people a good self-esteem, right? Without shunning them. The ability of accepting everyone where they are and meeting them where they are. A sister who's not wearing the hijab should still be able to come and feel comfortable coming to the masjid and benefiting. A young kid who's not dressed the way we want him to be dressed should still be able to come to the masjid and benefit like everyone else. A homeless young man who is on drugs, if he wants to come to the masjid, I believe he should still be let in. He should still come in, sit there. Even if he's sheltering himself from the elements outside of the masjid, let him be there when people are there. Our masjids are not doing that. To me, that's cultural positive change. Doing good things for others. My name is Daqa Hassan. I, um, I work at Children's Hospital. I work with special needs children. I um, help them utilize the system and find them resources and rehabilitation centers that they need to and uh, equipment and it all and everything. I am a student of Ribat, started last summer. I took Sister uh, Ansay Far Farhana's uh, class, um, Reflections, Quran Reflections. It was beautiful, mashallah very beautiful um, and 
this semester I'm taking the companions class and the fiqh, uh, fast and friendly fiqh. I come to the halakha as, uh, as much as I can and uh, any other uh, community events that are happening here, I like to partake in those too. Yeah. Any excuse to come to Rabata? I come. <laughs> I love that. Yes. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, the retreats too. Let's not forget that. Yes. Mm -hmm. The retreat. Summer retreats. Mm 